the past couple of days on stream i've been going to shoreline and i've been looting only pier and seeing all the loot we get out of there it's kind of a dangerous area to go to so i'm kind of interested in seeing is the loot actually worth it if you just go to pier itself at the beginning i'm going to show you what you can loot on the pier where you can get items from and then afterwards i'm going to show you all 10 runs that i did what items we got and you know was it worth it or was it not worth it so stick around we've got a lot coming I was pretty sure of all the lootable areas in Pier, but just to double check, I checked out this website called Map Genie. It's one of my new favorite websites. If you ever need to find out anything about maps and escape from Tarkov, I heard it from my boy Jesse Kazam, who also does YouTube content. And I think it's just one of the best websites for map breakdowns, not only in Tarkov, but many games. And I'm going to show you right now why I think that. So we're going to go ahead and click on escape from Tarkov. We're going to click on shoreline. And here it is, everything in Shoreline, all the lootable areas where scavs are, everything. But what we're interested in, of course, is Pier. And here's here, it's broken down. You can see there's filing cabinets. You can see there's a key spawn. You can see there's safes, there's PC blocks, uh, money. You can also see hidden caches are there. And when, when you want a key, if you click on the key, you can see where it spawns also. This is amazing. I love this part is you click on it and you get to see where it spawns then okay oh it's next to the filing cabinet that's where the key is this is an amazing website and i used it just to double check and make sure of everything but this is easily my go-to number one resource guide now for if i need to know about spawns or lootable areas anything like that so check out mapgenie.io hashtag not sponsored so we're going to go now to pier and i'm going to show you my loot run that i would do and all the lootable containers that there are here just to let you know this is during 12.6 when 12.7 does come the boss gets added to this map and he might spawn right here actually so things might change but as of right now this is how it is and right now we're going to go to the dead scav on the right that was just added during 12.6 and now we're going to go inside and to the left is going to be three filing cabinets two standing up and one on the ground you can loot all of those and just to let you know there is a key spawn on the ground there now we're going to go upstairs and there's going to be a safe and a PC block safe PC block. And then we're going to go across to the other room and the same things in there. One safe and one PC block. Now we're going to come down the stairs and there's a cash register right in front of us and we will loot that. And those are the big items I think everyone knows about on pier, but there's actually a, a couple more little areas you can loot. So you can go into this restaurant here. And once you go through the doors, there's actually another cash register. You can get a couple of rubles, a couple of euros out of. While I was doing this on stream, I was shocked at a lot of people not knowing actually about lighthouse. It's just out here. Um, not many people knew about this area because there's not much reason for you to go here. But uh, yeah, there's an area right up here and there's a couple of things you can grab. And just a FYI, I never got sniped at once, but you do have to be careful running here because the people across the river can see you. So there is a ground cache right here you can grab. Also, just before you go into the little lighthouse itself, there's a box on the ground here you can loot. And the last thing that is able to be taken here is a key spawn. It spawns on this broken wooden box. Spoiler alert, we did not find it once. <laughs> but it is an expensive ass key just, just to let everyone know. So that is the loot run. And now let's go see all that juicy, juicy, amazing loot. I'm sure we got from doing this at least 10 times, right? Just a couple of things before we start showing the nitty gritty of everything. I want to let everyone know that I did sell every single thing to traders. I didn't do half traders, half flea market. If it was a little more, most items, didn't it didn't matter that much i wasn't going to get much much more for everything and this way if i started my runs on thursday on monday i'm going to get a consistent number where the flea market could fluctuate quite a bit during those days so i did go with traders only also when i did get euros or uh dollars i converted them from the trader so what i meant by that is it's 135 rubles for one euro so if i got 
10 euros, I would count that as 1,350 rubles. So just to let you know how I did the ruble and the dollar amount conversion. But enough of me chatting, let's get to the goody goody. So here's run number one. The biggest big ticket item is probably the ADAR, I'd say. We did get 113 euros, which is really good too. Uh, you know, honorable mentions go to the circuit board, the cord, I guess, some caps, but really, it was a lot of meh on run number one and it got me kind of bummed out, I'm not gonna lie to you. But the total value of run number one wasn't too much at all, it barely cracked 100,000, it was 104,000 rubles. Run number two was actually a little bit better, got my hopes up, you know, we've got the AK-74N, which is a great gun, easy to mod, just an all around great weapon, I think, aside from it being 545, which is kind of meh right now, especially because you can't buy BS ammo, but that's neither here nor there. The next great items that we got were the drills, which we could trade for suppressors, uh, 9x19 suppressors if we wanted to. We did get a chocolate bar, always good to make sugar, and also we got condensed milk, which is very good. Also, uh, we did get 234 euros, which was another great find. All in all, really good run I would say we cracked 149,000 rubles so you know now I'm looking okay things might look up from here right things are looking a little bit good run number three definitely doesn't look like we got a lot of stuff yes we got the battery we got a GP coin but I didn't expect us to get much out of this and actually in the end we did get 145,000 rubles which was close to the last run number two uh, just by looking at it, you wouldn't expect it to be total this much, but it was actually a fairly decent run. You know, the big ticket items are your battery, your GP coin, you know, coffee's always great. We didn't get much euros and, you know, if you need a ripstop for a task or something. Run number four, we are getting a bit more stuff here. Our big ticket items are our clock. We got the Keck tape, we got the drill again, and we also got a GP coin. Not much in loose money. But all in all, a decent run, and we were able to crack 180,000. We still haven't cracked that 200,000 mark, but it is looking more and more as we go on. And this is by far the best run we've had. With run number five, it doesn't look like a lot. I actually had to sell everything twice just to double check my numbers because I didn't think I got that much. But the big ticket items here are your vase, your PSO scope, and your gold chain and the total comes out to 136,000. I know that's not a lot, but I thought selling all this stuff was gonna be a lot less. So I just had to double check my numbers, but they are correct. Run number six, pretty much a dud for sure. Uh, the big ticket items here are your gold chain, your Keck tape, you know, it, it, there wasn't really much. There was a lot of stuff, but it really didn't add up to much. We got 117,000 rubles, nothing too spectacular here in this run, mostly just a dud of a run. Okay, run number seven. This is where things started to heat up a bit here. We've got, you know, your book, you got your teapot, you got your pressure gauge, you got a sight there. Uh, you know, the, the blue tape's pretty good. The HD drive's pretty good. You got a chocolate bar. Really great run. We totaled 187,000 rubles. We could have got definitely a little more if we did sell in the flea market, but still just selling to traders, getting 187,000 rubles for this stuff was really good in my books. Run number eight, we did get a lot of stuff here. We got the Vepr AKM, that 762 Vepr. Great gun, not gonna lie to you, I do use it. I love 762 weapons. We've got the Vaz, we got some wires, again, some more HD drives. We did get the Keck tape. You know, a lot of stuff, it did equal up to 162,000 rubles. Definitely not the best run we've had, but definitely not the worst either. Just an in-between pretty decent run. Run number nine, we did get two antique books this time. We got the Troy chassis stock. Uh, other than that, you know, the cords, you know, a horse, eh. You know, nothing spectacular, but the two antique books were coming in clutch when it came to us selling everything. In the end, we did get 175,000 rubles. You know, it was, it doesn't look again, it doesn't, when I'm looking at this stuff, it's like, I don't feel like this should be 175,000 rubles just to the traders, but it actually is. So yeah, last run, here we come. And run number 10 was kind of just a, another meh. We never cracked 200,000, as you can tell by this run, definitely isn't gonna be 200,000 rubles worth of stuff. 
but we did still get the antique book out of it. We did get a sight. We got an optic, you know, again, some more wires, some more blue tape, a couple nuts and bolts. Again, if we would have sold on the flea market, we would have gotten definitely a little more, but for this experiment here, we just got 132,000 rubles. So in the end, we didn't ever crack 200,000 rubles to the traders, but I know if we would have sold everything to the flea market, we would have definitely cracked a couple of 200,000s, but that's, again, we're not gonna go into those details. We're just looking at the traders. Now let's, let's average that out and see what the average is, you know, per run of us going there was. The average ruble per run was, drum roll please. A hundred and forty nine thousand rubles. OK, that's not too bad, but there are a couple of things I want to talk about now that we've gotten that all over the way. First things first, I do want to talk about is most of the time when I would do these runs, I'd make sure I run to peer right away only because I wanted to make sure that nothing was looted yet. It wasn't picked over, so I would go there. I'd sprint there right away. Uh, and because of that, most of the time I would be running into a lot of people either coming towards me when I'm at pier, they'd be, they'd be rushing pier also, or when I was leaving pier, they'd be right around the old gas station area. The other thing I want to talk about is the size of my backpack. If you look at some of those runs, there's a lot of stuff. And without my at least tri zip backpack, I wouldn't have been able to bring out everything that I had. So I had to have some really big uh, storage on me. But in the end, what it comes down to is you can get one or two or even three or four good items out of there. You know, you can get something out of the safes, maybe something out of the cash. You know, I didn't find any of the keys that spawn there. I only did about, you know, in the end, about 13 or 14 runs, 10 were successful, three I, I definitely did die in, but I didn't find any keys. I didn't find any really crazy big ticket items. There are chances of you getting lions for sure in the safes though. But in the end, 149,000 to right away off the bat to rush there for that, it's not really worth it. What I would recommend you doing is if you scav in there, you can go check it out. But definitely don't go there right off the hop. You know, when 12.7 comes, things might change because the boss will, might spawn there and you want to go and try to find them. But it, it, it was okay. You know, I, I would definitely only, if I was doing a regular run, I would only take out maybe two or three items from there. And then I'd go somewhere else and loot some other areas because you know, matches don't matter. You know, a lot of the tape, the duct tape doesn't matter. A lot of the, you know, a lot of the stuff that is in, you know, filing cabinets really doesn't make much of a difference and it doesn't do much per square value that you're looking at. I still had a great time. It was still a really good experiment. I'm happy I did it. And I hope you guys all like it also. Just a heads up, I really do appreciate you guys watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel. That's up to you. I will never pressure you, but I want you to know that it is free for you guys, but it means the world to me. I also stream five days a week, Monday to Friday, and we do stuff like this a lot of times. Um, if you ever have questions, come on by. I will never mock you for any question you ask me because, hey, we all started from square one also, and this game is very, very difficult with telling you information. So come by, say hello, and until next time, I will talk to everyone later.